Hey everyone, welcome back to another video on Crack Concepts and in this video we will be learning Python from scratch and this is going to be our agenda for the day. So without wasting any more time, let's quickly begin with learning Python. So like any other language, we are going to start learning Python by writing print statement, by learning how to write a hello world program. So how do we write a print statement in Python? We simply write print and all you need to do is write whatever you want to print. So I'm going to write hello world. And that's it. That's our output. As you can see, hello world is printed. Now let's see various data types in Python. So we have numeric type, dictionary, sequence type, and set. In numeric type, we have integers, floats, complex. I think we are well aware of these. Then there is dictionary. Then there is sequence type in which we have list, tuple, and strings. And then we have set. We are well aware of most of these data types. Dictionary, set, list, and tuple are four different data types. So I will be explaining these four data types. Otherwise, integers, floats, and string, and all of these are well known. In Python, whenever you want to create a variable, it is very simple. All you need to do is simply write a variable name equal to and whatever value you want to give it. So here, if I want to create an integer, all I need to do is I have to write a, this is the variable name, equal to whatever the value is. Suppose I also want to print it. Also, you do not need to use semicolons and stuff in Python. So that's amazing. And here's our output. We got our output, 555. Five, five. If I want to create another variable, which is a string, and I write drag concepts. And then if I print b, this will be our output 555 from here and drag concepts from here. So this is very simple. Creating variables in Python is very simple. Now let's understand what is list. List, as I've written over here, list items are ordered, changeable, and allow duplicate values. Now what that means is, suppose I, as I already said, if I have to create anything, I simply have to give it a name. So I'm going to give it this name, this list. This is the name of the list equal to for list we use square brackets and then we can give it any value one two three and now if i have to print this simply need to write this this also python is case sensitive so and this is our list this is our output list items are ordered which means they have indexes so this one will have index zero this one will have index one this will have index two index start from zero and list are also changeable now for example if i write this list dot append this is an inbuilt function if i write append and if i write five and then if i write print this list this is and needs to be capital here so this is an inbuilt function append which will add 5 at the end of the list which is why our output is 1, 2, 3, 5. Now for example I want to remove a particular item from the list. What I'm going to write is again this list dot remove and whatever I want to remove. Let's say I want to remove 3 and then again if I print it let's see the output. 3 is gone because I use the inbuilt function remove. So 1, 2, 5. So this is what lists are. They are ordered. So their order cannot be changed because the list contained items in this order. 1, 2, 3 and then 5, 1, 2, 3, 5. The lists are ordered, changeable because I just removed an item. I added an item. So it is changeable. And it also allows duplicate items. Now what that means is, for example, again if I append over here and if I append Again, five. Let's see output. One, two, five, five. Which means it is allowing duplicate values. So this is list. Tuple items are ordered, unchangeable, and allow duplicate values. Now these are more or less like list, but the only difference is they cannot be changed. You cannot add items in it. You cannot remove items out of it. So I am going to again create a variable over here named this tuple. And another difference between list and tuple is for list we would use square brackets, for tuple we use circular brackets, round brackets. 
Now here I am going to write apple, banana, cherry, that's it, and I'm going to print it. And let's see if it allows duplicate values. Again, I'm going to write banana, and I'm going to run it. Unchangeable because we cannot add items to it, we cannot remove items to it to it we cannot change anything in a tuple and it allows duplicate values because we have two bananas over here so this is what a tuple is set is a collection which is unordered and unindexed and you can remove items and add new items into it so here i've again created a variable this set and in sets we use curly brackets in list we use square brackets in tuple we use circular brackets round brackets in set we use curly brackets and as you can see I have added these items into it 1 2 3 4 6 7 7 7 and then I've written a written a print statement as you can see the output of here even though in my set I have added seven three times in my output it is only showing one time which means that sets cannot contain duplicate values it can only contain unique values this set dot add and I'm going to add a value to it let's say 5 and then this set dot remove I will remove 2 and let's print it let's run it and this is our output 1 3 4 5 6 7 2 was removed 5 was added and this is our output also sets are unordered and unindexed which means this does not have index 0 this does not have index 1 it does not have any indexes what is a dictionary dictionaries are used to store data values in key value pairs it is a collection which is changeable and does not allow duplicates let's see how we can create a dictionary this is the variable name this dictionary is equal to again we use curly brackets but since we are going to have key and values over here this is how it's going to be fruit colon and whatever value you want to give it comma and if I write print over here and if I run it this is our output Fruit is our key and apple is our value. Brand is our key, Gucci is our value. And this is our output. And there are various inbuilt functions for dictionaries. In fact, not just for dictionaries, for tuple, list, sets, all of these. You can check it out online. I will just show a few for dictionary. This dictionary dot. Suppose we want to add a new item to it set item and we write vegetable colon and if I write print over here let's see the output sorry this needs to be a comma and i needs to be small this is our output this dictionary dot set item this is the key this is the value and then we are printing it. As you can see, this is our output. Fruit, brand, vegetable. For example, I want to remove a particular key value pair. All I need to do is I need to use the pop function. Implant. And this is our output. And if I need to remove the last item, I will use pop item. Again, I'm going to print it. This is our output. So pop item will remove the last key value pair. Hence, this, this is our output. Now we are going to see if else statements in Python. It's very easy. Suppose I have two variables, a and b, and then this is going to be my if statement. If b is greater than a, and in Python we do not need to use brackets and stuff we can use indentation so i'll just need to use tab and this will help me out print whatever you want to print b is greater than a 
and that's it we don't need to do anything we do not need to use semicolon or anything over here we need to use colon if b is greater than a colon then indentation whatever processing you need to do you can do it over there since this is a beginner's class i am just going to print something and this is my output if b is greater than a then this will be printed now suppose i want to add a else if statement or a else statement what i'm going to do is if i want to add a else if statement e l i f will be used and if i write b is equal to equal to a indentation print a is equal to b else colon to mark the colon below else print a is greater than b let's run it this is the output if i change this to 333 let's see the output a is greater than b so this is working now let's see how we can write while statement a is equal to 1 b is equal to 5 while a is less than b what i'm going to do i'm going to print print a and i'm also going to increment a by 1 and if i run it this is our output what this is doing is while a is less than b while 1 is less than 5 if 1 is less than 5 it will go inside the while loop and over here it will print a and then it will also increment a so a will become 2 then again it will come in the loop then it will print 2 then 3 then 4 this will only work till the time a is less than b the moment a is greater than b or equal to b it will come out of the loop and it will stop working now let's see for loop let's say we have a we have a list apple banana cherry for i in fruits colon print i now if i run it this will be my output what this is doing is for i in fruits so we do not need to initialize i this is the speciality of python so it will start going through the list fruits for i in fruits so one by one it will go through each item in the list fruits and it will print i because i've written print i over here so it will print apple then banana then cherry so this is how you can use a for loop let's see how we can create a simple function in python we are going to use def then your function name my function if you want to give any parameters you can give it over here i am not giving any parameter i'm keeping it empty colon and inside that i can do whatever i want my function to do i can create variables i can create lists i can create anything and then i can print or i can return this can do anything in this case all i'm doing is i'm just printing this is my function and let's call this function my function yes here we are creating the function here we are calling it if i comment this out the output will be nothing because i am not calling this function now let's see what is a lambda function lambda function is a small anonymous function a lambda function can have as many arguments or as many parameters as you want but it can have only one expression let's see how we can write a lambda function i'll again create a variable and then lambda function for lambda function we just need to simply write lambda and then what is going to be your parameter let's say a colon and what is going to be the expression what is going to be inside the function what you want to do with the parameter a what is the processing that needs to be done will be written over here so a into 33 and that is it this is my lambda function if i run it this is my lambda function i am not calling it hence i am not getting any output this is the speciality of lambda functions you can finish a function in a single line now if i call this function print now what is the name of this lambda function x why because i've written x over here. x is equal to what this is my lambda function 
where this is the parameter and this is what is going to be processed. If I write print x and then if I give the parameter, let's say I give one as the parameter. Let's run it. I get the output as 33. How? Because I'm what what I'm doing is I'm writing over your print. Then this is the lambda function x. The parameter is one. The lambda function I am calling x. What is x? X is this. This means lambda function. So how is this working? This is my print statement. What am I printing? What am I calling x? What is x? x is this. What? Lam lambda function. And x has this parameter 1. x has the parameter 1. What is the parameter in this lambda function? a. a is the parameter which means 1. And this is the processing part. This is going to be written. So 1 into 33. Hence the output is 33. If I write 2 over here, I get 66. If I write 11 over here, I get 363. With that, I'm going to end the video. I hope this was helpful and you could understand Python better. Go check out our Python playlist. We also have playlists for various other programming languages. Go check it out. And thank you for watching. Do like, share and subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much.